back my name is Zane today I'll be talking about Bitcoin what happens to lost Bitcoin I've got a very in-depth article here today and it's really good it just it just goes through what happens to lost Bitcoin you know there's these magical golden coins lost in online wallets and the sad thing is there are hundreds of these thousands because there's a little bit mined here and there all throughout the early days of Bitcoin when it was much easier to mine Bitcoin and few people were mining them just as a hobby, just here and there. And so many people forgot, throwing away their laptops, throwing away their, their wallets. You know, many of us would have made the same mistake. But what happens to those Bitcoin hidden away in these multiverse, you know, in a different um, universe that we can't get to that easily. It's kind of sad when you think about it. All this money is locked away. And the idea of the fact that we can't get it, it's really beautiful. <laughs> if you think about it, it's really complicated, extraordinary, it's fascinating, but at the same time, it's painful. And we all heard that story of the programmer who had over 250 million of Bitcoin locked away on a hard drive and only two password guesses are left to access it. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I cannot remember the passwords I used to use back in 2009 and 2010 and 2011 and 2012. I can't remember those passwords. I really can't. So imagine being there and trying to remember your old passwords and your brain just won't allow you. This guy needs to talk to Elon Musk. Maybe Elon Musk can help him get one of those, one of those um, Neuralink chip in his brain to help him jog his memory. That's the only, that's probably the best solution. And Elon Musk is so bullish on Bitcoin, he would probably just do it because it sounds like a cool idea to help someone retrieve their own memory from their own brain because they're, the human brain struggles to do that. Use a machine to retrieve that memory. It sounds crazy. You guys are going to be calling me crazy. But Elon Musk is the craziest person on this planet. And he's also the most genius person on this planet. So maybe he can get it done. Maybe he can help this guy. But seriously, guys, what happens? You know, unlike fiat currency, like the US dollars, Bitcoin was designed to have a limited supply. While more banks' notes can always be printed by the Federal Reserve, Bitcoin has only got 21 million coins in existence. And based on what my research, Satoshi Nakamoto, the man himself, or the person, or the group, or the girl, the woman, whoever Satoshi Nakamoto is, they have 1 million Bitcoin hidden away in their wallet, and it has never been moved. <laughs> And that in itself is crazy to think about. So lost and destroyed Bitcoin further shrinks the currency maximum supply. So all of these Bitcoins that are lost, it just makes Bitcoin even more valuable when you think about it. It's like a Banksy artwork. You know, the more lost it is, is the more mystery around it. You know, like the Mona Lisa painting, the more craziness that's going on around it. It's, it's crazy. So, so according to Kane Island's um, digital research, 4% of available Bitcoin is lost each year. 4% of available Bitcoin is lost each year? What? I'm so confused. Are people still losing Bitcoin? <laughs> I'm so confused right now because I'm like, hold on a minute. Are people still losing Bitcoin? Is that still a thing? Like, really? How is that even possible? But maybe, maybe there are people who haven't even realized what Bitcoin is. They mined it nine, eight years ago, and they still don't know that Bitcoin hit 60,000 60, US dollars a couple weeks ago. They probably still don't waken up to the trend. They probably still don't know that they have millions locked away. They probably still don't know. They probably still don't realize that, they, that they've thrown away millions. And one of these days, they're going to wake up and someone's going to say Bitcoin hit six, $60,000. 60, and they're going to be like, what? Bitcoin 
I mine some Bitcoin. Every day there's a person waking up to that sad reality. <laughs> and five and four percent of available Bitcoin is lost each year. Oh my goodness. So despite Bitcoin being designed with a limited supply of 21 million coins, Kane Allen's estimate that a maximum of 14 million Bitcoin will will ever circulate due to the rate at which coins are lost. Why are coins being lost? I'm curious. Is is there a possibility I could find these coins? Like I could get my hands on these coins before they're lost. I could save it. Take it for myself. Because like that's what we'd all do. Come on guys. I'm just like we're all thinking it. I'm just saying it, you know? I'm just saying it guys. I'm just being straightforward with you. But seriously, 14 million of 21 million will ever circulate that makes bitcoin even more rare originally it was supposed to be four, uh, 21 million but if 14 million is the only circulating supply because of the because of how much people lose this currency it's so e which it's not like your bank account it's not like your passport it's not like your bank card where you can just reorder it or go to the bank to get some help or go to the authorities nobody can hack bitcoin at this time maybe supercomputers in the future but when i say supercomputers i mean quantum computer but as for now this makes bitcoin even more rare which is crazy so reports cited by the new york times state that 18.5 bitcoin mined so far an estimate 20 percent appears to be inaccessible or lost at the time of the new york Times report the value of this Inacceptable Bitcoin was somewhere in the ballpark of 100, 100, 140 billion US dollars. Proponent theorized that lost coins only serve to increase the value of the remaining currency. Yes, it does, because there's less supply. That's insane. 14 million, you got to understand, 14 million is shy away from being 10 million. That's almost half the original supply. Almost. So there's 7 million Bitcoin out there that will cease to exist. <laughs> Not to mention Satoshi Nakamoto has his own 1 million that he's never moved from, from his wallet. Crazy. So, yes, scarcity of Bitcoin is going to be, is going to be crazy because, guys, you've got to remember now, um, Bitcoin is $40,000 40, away from from um from 100k not at the time not at this time it's actually 52,000 right now but it was 60 60,000 a couple weeks ago so we'll get there again i'm sure of it so here's the thing there are a few ways in which bitcoin can get lost or destroyed the most common of these boil down to mistakes made when storing or sending the assets yes it's as we humans, we just forget our passwords. We forget our emails. We forget that we sign up to shit. We forget that we have an account. And it's a similar thing with Bitcoin. We easily forget it and we think, oh, it'll be all right. It won't. You have no help. Forget about contacting the Bitcoin customer service. There is no Bitcoin customer service. <laughs> it's sad, but it's also kind of funny. So when sending Bitcoin from wallet to another, the users ask, for a string of 26 to 35 characters, which serve as a recipient address. Most wallets are actually extremely robust when it comes to making sure that this ephemeric affirm string matches the, key, the, the public key of a cryptocurrency wallet that actually exists. In other words, sending Bitcoin to the wrong address due to typo is, exceed, is increasingly rare, right? exceedingly rare so another like they said sending bitcoin to the wrong address due to the typo is exceedingly rare what is more common however is sending bitcoin to the wrong wallet as a consequence of getting two addresses mixed up a user might for instance send bitcoin to an address belonging to a fraudulent actor rather than the wallet address of a family member they could also accidentally send um send bitcoin to a wallet that they previously conducted business with another um to to intend on recipient to a new transaction 
As long as someone has access to the receiving wallet, those coins should still remain in the circulation, but can also be, be sent to burn addresses or wallets that people have lost access to. Since Bitcoin is immutable, there is no way to undo these transactions. No way. Burn addresses in context are those which belongs to wallets that are virtually impossible to spend coins from. Sending coins to these addresses is equivalent to putting money into a safe that no one will ever be able to open. That's kind of crazy and exciting and weird and just sounds super dope. You know, in some instance, cryptocurrencies are intentionally sent to burn addresses. This process is known as burn in some crypto assets used to expandable addresses in order to prove that they're limiting the supply of their own currency. There is even consensus algorithm known as proof of burn built around this process. Thousands of coins are lost each year due to improper storage. People frequently lose Bitcoin to how, how they store them. For instance, many people store their Bitcoin online on exchange. In doing so, they're relying on the exchange to keep their assets secure. Keyword is secure. Let's highlight that. Keyword is secure right there, guys. So while there are um, certainly reputable exchanges operating in the world today, there have been um, a lot of um, Fedora cases throughout the last decades where exchanges have stolen their users' assets or failed to prevent hackers from doing so. Crazy. Why should you never score cryptocurrency on an exchange? There's an article for that. There's an article for that. So according to Atlas VPN, blockchain hackers um, store nearly 3.7 billion USD worth of digital assets across 122 hacks attacks in 2020. These attacks include notable examples such as hacking, stealing around 115 USD, in cryptocurrency from an exchange in Singapore which stores a portion of its assets and hot wallets. When you store a cryptocurrency like Bitcoin, you can either do so by storing your assets in a hot wallet or a cold wallet. The former reference to wallet which are internet connected, offering increasingly accessibility, they can easily be used with um, without any dedicated hard drive or often take only a few minutes to set up. However, uh, this storage method is vulnerable to breach. Um, cold wallets, on the other hand, which are the best, they're offline, they're secure. If you keep them safe, no one can ever get them. So those are the ways of storing your cryptocurrency offline. They're much more secure as they prevent hackers from gaining access. However, not all cold wallets are equally user-friendly. A, sig um, a significant amount of Bitcoin have been permanently lost due to people losing private keys which grants them access to their wallet. In addition, there have been many cases of hardwares being misplaced or failing where users didn't create a, a backup, making the funds impossible to retrieve. Sorry, sorry, so sorry. So uh, billions of dollars worth of Bitcoins are in limbo. Zombie coins are these with addresses that have not held any outgoing transactions for years, yet theoretically could still be accessed. One such address is, um, is associated with infamous MT. Um, Gox hack. This address has um, has been holding seventy nine thousand Bitcoin since twenty eleven. No one knows for sure if those coins will ever re-enter circulation. It stands to reason that the owner may be deceased or have lost as access to their wallet. So yes. People, if people pass away, their family probably don't even know they have Bitcoin. And that is so sad when you think about it. Their family probably will never know they ever had Bitcoin, which is even more sad. My goodness. It's crazy when you think about it. Because sometimes when you have cryptocurrency, you don't really tell anyone. You don't really tell your family, oh, by the way, I'm holding... Maybe you do tell your family sometimes, I'm holding um, 10,000 Bitcoin. What is that? We don't care. Could we talk about something else? They never care because they can never understand it. Some families do care, but usually you try to explain these things to your family members. It just goes through one ear and out the next. And they have no idea. 
no idea sometimes. So it's kind of crazy. So they talk about how to keep your Bitcoin safe as well. But fundamentally, that's what happens to Bitcoin. You know, it's locked away in a, in a, in a wallet that can, that can never really be accessed. You know, it's, it's kind of sad. So every year, there are hundreds of stories about people losing their private key or throwing away their hard drive that had their Bitcoin wallet on it. This year, for instance, a programmer in San Francisco made headline when he found when he found himself locked out of an encrypted hard drive with reportedly 220 million US dollars worth of Bitcoin stored on it. According to the article, he only had he only has two remaining um remain in attempts to input the correct passwords before his coins are permanently lost. That is just painful to imagine. That is really just painful to imagine because when you have two more opportunities, you got to think about, you probably, he probably will never even make another attempt. He probably won't ever make another attempt because if he makes another attempt, then he only has one chance left. And if he makes the final attempt, he has no more remaining chances left. So in order to, I don't, I don't even know if these encrypted hard drives are even possible to be hacked. But yeah, if he tries two more time and he fails, his coins are locked away forever in a ghost wallet. And never be access but as sad as that is at the same time it's pretty surreal and pretty lonely Bitcoin is actually a very lonely coin it's always been lonely since it's since its inception in 2009 July the 7th 2009 that incredible day when Bitcoin was launched Bitcoin has forever been just lonely and now the coins that are lost forever are even more lonelier they're just out there somewhere and we'll never get them just just digits that have been added into a computer but have been mined and been given value because we believe in this cryptocurrency we believe in this coin that it's better to hold this because it's more secure but you can see it's actually very dangerous as well if you forget your private key or if it's locked away. And they mention a lot of ways how your assets could be stolen, how you could lose it, and how you should never keep it on an online exchange, no matter which exchange. Coinbase has never been hacked, but no system is perfect. Trust nothing. Trust your judgment. I'm not a financial advisor, but I'm just saying cold wallets are the best. They're offline. You know, for the most part, they're offline. So that just means that if it's not connected to the Internet, then it's impossible to be act unless someone actually gets their physical hands on your thumb drive, on your actual um, gateway to your wallet, your your hard drive. So, yeah, it's it's interesting, but that's what happens to Bitcoin. It's in it's locked away into this spider verse of different dimension, where it will never be touched. They're ghost coins, but it's there's something I'm very fascinated with. So thank you guys for watching this. Subscribe, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Subscribe, and I rec I recommend you guys checking out my newest video. It's called it's what is status. And status can make you a millionaire. It actually can. I did the maths. Uh, I'd also recommend you guys checking out Engine. I've got some other the Engine video that I made. I've got some other videos as well. You guys can check out Ren. Yeah, hope you guys enjoy these videos. And I hope to see you guys in more. Thank you for watching.